Sea, but John Sheridan for Fig Warns. There's lots of moving parts to follow, and he joins us now live from Sydney. Well, what are those moving parts? Because, of course, that retail sales read in the US was pretty disappointing overnight. Good morning, Ingrid. That's right. Yes, as you say, it surprised most people in the market. They were looking for a much more bullish figure, and what we saw as a result was that US Treasuries caught a bid and, and they rallied about five points, reversing the sell off from the prior day. Uh, as you say, there, there's also plenty going on. We've got China GDP out, we've got Yellen's testimony, uh, which is coming up, and then we've also, of course, got yet another chapter in the Greek saga, which um, will, will be resolved after their parliament votes on the bailout proposal tonight. So, to your mind, safe harbours reign supreme through all of this, uh, just a typical run back into USTs uh, and, and prices lower as a result? Yes, I think I think that's definitely the case. I mean, uh, with these with these uh, situations coming out that could introduce volatility and sell off in risk assets, you, you definitely want to have uh, a bigger allocation to those safe havens. However, the problem is is that if Janet Yellen comes out and you know and they're pretty hawkish and they say, look, we'll be ignoring the retail sales, for example, then those treasuries themselves are going to sell off in some regard. So you know, if you're an institutional money manager, there, there's very few places to hide at the moment. Um, one of the things that maybe I would look to is gold which has been you know really really the, the sort of forgotten asset class really in the last six months or so it's pretty much done nothing it's range traded between you know sort of 1150 and 1200 so maybe a bigger allocation there well that's that's going to be interesting if, if the Fed's not going to be swerved off course the US dollar bills are going to therefore feel vindicated and add to their positions uh, you know, going long the dollar is not a recipe for uh, attracting gold uh, bugs into the market, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously gold priced in US dollars, so it makes it more expensive for everyone else. Um, but, you know, gold is really the, the sort of fundamental store of wealth, you know, so that you don't really hold gold in large quantities for, for a trading perspective like that. It's just about, you know, keeping, mm -hmm. keeping inflation at bay, which if the US economy is improving and, and the Fed thinks that there's sufficient improvement to raise rates, then that should be bullish for gold. Speaking of the Aussie dollar, because we were just obviously mentioning that, 74 and a half US cents right now. Do you expect a movement in that from from China, I mean, how much is the, US, the, the Aussie US pair at the moment just a US Fed story, and how much is it China? Oh. Yeah, definitely. I think it's been US dollar strength over the last few months. Uh, it hasn't really been coming from our, our side, uh, Aussie weakness. Um, but that, you know, that could all change if we get a weak China GDP number. Uh, I think re we'd really like to see it in that six and a half to seven range and, and at the higher end. So if it comes out in the low, uh, the lower end of that range, then I expect we'd see a sell off in, in Aussie dollars, particularly also with what's happened in iron ore in the last couple of weeks. Uh, now the point would be as well that uh, you know beyond all of this, what's domestically going to be taking up investors' attention too? I mean, well, let's just talk about some domestic issuance. Yeah, I mean. In the bond markets, really, you know, we've just got the major the major data points. So I think I agree with with what Bill just said. You know, we're in for a, a stable period of, of Aussie rates unless we get some kind of real shock to the downside. Um, that's going to put a floor under under Australian bond market expectations, and will be driven by what happens overseas. Um, you know, I think um, the, the point about rates being at their lower bound and not being very effective if they do uh, if they do indeed cut further is a very valid one. Uh, and I think, like I say, that that puts a bit of a floor under the domestic drivers of bond prices. All right, lots to watch there, of course. Thank you so much, John. We'll leave it there. Thanks, guys. John Sheridan from Fig Security.